Hi friends, today we are going to delve deeper into the postdoc issue and today I'm going to talk about how to get a host for a German postdoc. Now many of you are familiar with the various German postdocs such as the Humboldt Fellowship, the DAAD fellowships, also there are fellowships given by bodies such as the DFG and so on. That's the Deutsche Forschung Gemeinschaft, that's like a German science foundation. Now, in the proposals for all these bodies or in the application form, you do need to provide a host. And this is typically a professor or a research scientist in the German system. And this person essentially hosts your stay, they vet your proposal, and they are an important component of the application process. So now many people find issues about getting an appropriate host. Now before you move forward, one of the things to keep in mind is that in Germany, you have the university system, which is quite widespread throughout the country. You also have various research institutes. For example, you have the Max Planck Institutes, which focus more on basic research. You have the Fraunhofer Institute, which essentially focus on applied research and then you also have DLR which essentially focuses on aircraft and space related research. So you can actually get hosts from all these people and there is also possibility of getting hosts from large corporations if you are able to find them. But let us restrict more to the university and the national lab because you can get information about the people working in these places on the different web pages. Now, one of the things people find when they apply to various people or when they send off their mails to these people is that they do not often get a reply. And this happens to a lot of people. And when I went to Germany, I found out some of the basic reasons for this particular problem. We need to keep in mind that in the German system, most of the communication is taking place in the German language. So people are often deluged by a plethora of emails from around the world asking for prospective PhD, prospective postdocs and so on. And again, this not being a language with which they are very familiar, they effectively do not reply to, I would say 99.99% of these mails. Now, you may find a greater degree of success if you have done some prior research through your literature survey and in Google Scholar as to the people who are working in your research niche and then contact those people. Now again, remember here, I would partition this population into several crowds. I would say that people who are more familiar with the English language are more likely to reply to you. So in fact, in my stints in Germany, all the hosts had some exposure in their postdoctoral work in a US or UK institution. And therefore, these people were very comfortable with communicating in the English language. Now, if you do know German, then that's a big edge as far as you are concerned. You could directly interact with people in German and you will find a lot of barriers are going to break down if you are able to speak or write the German language. Now, the second fact is that people in the sciences are much more receptive to males from abroad as far as postdoc and PhD position are concerned. Now, in science, there has always been a very global culture. Now, engineering disciplines are more national looking. There are a lot of candidates from within the country and engineering is also often focused largely on the UG program and on the master's level and at maximum on a PhD level. So the postdoc culture is somewhat less as far as the engineering fields are concerned. So if you are able to apply to a more science type of engineering department, then your chances go up. And in fact, in my case, I actually wrote a proposal which was vetted by two hosts. One of them was from a more of a science background and one was more of an engineering background. So if you are able to do something like this, then also your proposal will become stronger. Finally, I would say that you will find that the junior researchers in the field are 
much more likely to be familiar with the English language as compared to very senior researchers in the field. So again, you are likely to receive a reply from a junior researcher for many of these particular fellowships. And again, these are not hard and fast rules. These are just heuristics which I have obtained over the years by observing my own experience and the experience of my students. So you can mix and match them based on your own experience. And if your experiences were different, please post them on comments on my channel. So they will be useful for anybody else who is applying to the German system. Like once again, I would like to point out that Germany is one of the best locations for postdocs in science and engineering because through historical reasons, these disciplines have been well funded in Germany. And in fact, you will recall that Germany was one of the first countries which created the PhD. In fact, if you see many cartoons, you will find many of the mad scientist type people that have some kind of German accent when they talk. I mean, I'm not trying to say anything, but that tells you the fact that Germany has an old reputation in terms of producing scientists. And therefore, you can take advantage of various systems such as the Humboldt Fellowship, the DAD Fellowships, the DFG Fellowships and so on, as well as many opportunities which are present in the universities in terms of the Marie Curie Fellowships of the European Union and so on. All you need to do is find a host and that's not a simple problem. So I hope this video will help you with some guidelines about finding a host for a German postdoc position. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so and please like my videos because YouTube machine learning likes that and that will help to propagate my videos to more people. Thank you very much. I will see you in my video soon.